Hi, it's Andy, and welcome to the Hills Church Podcast. Our hope is that this will help your life and inspire your faith. Thanks again for checking us out. This morning, if I'm being honest, Hills Church, um, I just wanted to just, just settle a wee month. Is that all right? And, and more like I have a wee conversation this morning. Is that good? Uh, we're, we're about to kick off a new collection that starts next week, and I'm excited about that. It's going to run on the Christmas. And um, just a heads up as well, Just we have an Amer- another American guest coming in a couple of weeks. Would you believe it? Americans love us right now. Um, but uh, he's a guy who I literally just got in contact with, and uh, we're on the process. We have the art conference coming up. We're super excited about that. You know the crack at your tickets. If you can make it along, that would be great. Uh, he's going to be a part of that collection as well. But uh, we just felt the Lord just say that today was just like, Almost like we're halfway between now and we're, we're halfway, everyone's back to school, yes? We're all back in the groove um, and all the Christmas stuff's out in the shops and uh, everyone's going the same thing. I mean, it's nearly Christmas. Can you believe it's nearly Christmas? And I don't know about you, but outside the school grounds when I'm dropping uh, or collecting, more likely the kids from school, uh, all I hear talked about is, can you believe it's nearly Christmas? And did you hear the price of the oil? <laughs> Diesel's cheaper and the apple green and Lufford. Than it does in the other one, and it's a penny. I mean, um, and that's just what's going on right now. And it was kind of that that I just thought, hey, today, this is chilly to be honest. Um, and this is where we just have a conversation with us as a church to go, God is still good. And I, I know that we are facing, um, guys, a, a challenge in winter. I mean, the, like it's it's going to be hard for 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 us all financially. It's going to be there's a challenge out there. Um, there's a challenge out there of you know it is what it is. Oil is expensive, and we hadn't the heat on. I mean, we wore three coats up until yesterday. I'm kidding. Um, you want to try and heat our, heat our house? We live in a seven bedroom house with no insulation. You turn the heat on for five hours, the house gets warm in the fourth hour. Then you turn the heat off again, it's freezing in 20 minutes. That's kind of the drill. Um, but the reality is, and the top of everyone's conversation is, it's going to be a challenge monitor. Yes, but God. 612 times in Scripture, this slogan, but God, is mentioned. And I don't know about you, but we just thought we would do communion this morning. We would reflect. And, you know, I've heard this week there's a lot of people sick. There's a d- different things going on in people's lives. And some people are away this weekend. And you can grab this later in the podcast. Um, but this weekend's just about, we just sit, sit and stop and go, it's just good to be a follower of Jesus. No matter what you're facing, no matter the winter we're going to face, no matter what it may look like, God is in control. I don't want this to be a fancy thing this morning. There's no five-point wonders. This message is titled, But God. This is what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. My health may fail, and my spirit may grow weak, But God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 says this. Jesus said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. We look at Acts chapter 13, verse 30. We just talked this morning about communion. Hey, they may have tried to kill Jesus, but God rose him to life. You see, I don't know about you this winter, and I don't know about you but this Sunday, but this is what I do know. Over and over again, I'm hearing of conversation after conversation of people sharing testimony and sharing stories of God showing up in their life. Yes? And this is what I know, that there there are so many people in this room have had a but God moment. We've we've all had but God moments. Yes? Yeah? We've had moments where God has come and showed up. And church, you've on the journey with me with this whole anxiety crack and different story. And you, know, you guys know me as, 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 as Andy Gamble. You know me. Like, like you, you cannot hide who you are. It's just, just the crack. And that's just the way it is. And you've known my story that God has come through lots of times in my life. And I know he's come lots of times through in your life. And, and I just wanted to maybe this weekend to just be a, a wee pause button and go like, do you know what? We're all back to school. We're all back into the rhythm. Um, it's good to be in routine, isn't it? 
good back in routine, good to be busy, and thank God, I mean, just hearing story after story of God's goodness and favor over businesses and people getting jobs and work, and, and that's just so exciting because can you imagine what it must feel like if you're going into a scenario like we're all going to do right now of the winter and all the prices and all the stuff, but let's just say this, would, how much worse would it be facing a scenarios in our life without God? You know, unnecessary curveballs, different stuff going on, different things going on. I, I want to encourage you today, if you are not a follower of Jesus yet, you should become a follower of Jesus because the, the root, the, the key to every contentment and everything, because it's in Christ we're made of, through Christ we live. God has a plan and he has a purpose for each and every single person on planet earth. And if this weekend were to do one thing, it was to remind us, us that God is good. Bible says that he will never leave us, nor he would f never forsake us. Bible says, even though I walk through a shadow of a valley of death, God will be with us. And I don't know about you, but that brings me a lot of hope and a lot of peace. And I think being a Christian is not something we should back down from. I think being a Christian and following Jesus is the coolest thing in the world. I want to say to our young people, you're facing school, education, all the stuff that comes on with that age and life. It is the coolest thing in the world to be a Jesus follower. Yes, following Jesus is the answer because we have the answer, I believe, that the whole world is searching for. Peace that passes understanding, the Bible says. Contentment that cannot be found in any other thing, drug, rock and roll in the world. Following Jesus brings us peace. And when we face this winter, I just believe that we should be the most positive speaking people on the planet. Yes, I think we should be the most encouraging people to be around. I think we should be inspiring faith and inspiring people. The bottom line, yes, we all know it is what it is when it comes to all the things we're just talking about. But God is still good. Hey, even though I'm going through a, a challenge with my death, but God is with me, even though I face death, regardless of what way you go in or out of this thing, and the bottom line is we're all going out of this thing called life, it's just when, and having the hope and assurance that I get eternal life out of this thing with Jesus, only, even only that brings me great peace. And this morning we all get an opportunity to take a few moments to reflect and just to settle ourselves before God and to remind us of the goodness of God. God is good. There's some people in this room, and you need to hear this this morning. Do you know this? That you have prayed for the very thing that you're now complaining about. Nathan Ferris. How long have we prayed and talked about you being in the fire service? <laughs> this week you got a tightener. Seven shirts a day. Try for mentioning you. I don't hear you complain, to be fair. For a lot of us, the very thing that we're complaining about used to be a prayer request. You see, there's no sense in you praying for rain if you're not willing to deal with the mud. All the farmer says, Andy, you couldn't pray for the rain to stop, for the sure is run down the fill under the burn. I can translate that if you want later. Job lost everything, but God kept him strong. Joseph's dreams were crushed, but God brought his dreams to reality. Daniel got through into the lion's den, but God closed their mou the mouths of the lions. Moses had a speech impediment, but God used him to lead his people. Abraham couldn't have any children, but God made him the father of nations. Moses killed an Egyptian, but God anointed him to save Israel. David messed up with Bathsheba, but God still used him. Peter denied Jesus, but God used him to proclaim Jesus. Zechariah, I'm not even going to read that one. Mary was a humble teenager, but God used her to birth the Savior of the world. Paul persecuted the church, but God used him to build the church. David was a shepherd boy, but God made him king. Esther was an orphan, but God used her to save the Jewish people from destruction. Sarah was very old, but God used her to let us see his promises always come true and his timing is always right. Jesus died on the cross, but God raised him to life. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter if you have failed, listen, Hills Church, failure is not fatal. It is not the end of the road. Financial difficulty 
but God is our provider. Anxious, but God can give you peace. Sick, but God is our healer. Relational issues or breakdowns, but God is our restorer. Fear, but God gives us courage. Hurt, but God heals hurt. Lonely, but God is our friend. Depressed, but God can help. No purpose, but God gives you purpose. No provision, but God can provide. You see, this week we just had the honor and privilege. How good it was to have an Ethan here last week, eh? He, he, he's a great, great friend, and hard to think we just didn't even really know those guys over a year ago. And I think sometimes Americans get a little bit of slack because they are super confident. I, I don't know about you, but every time I'm American, I get around American, they seem to want to just be able to conquer the world. But, but what I really picked up this week was uh, I got to spend a few days with them. In fact, I was a tour guide for three days, literally, flat out. We toured the whole place. And at one point, they were like, and Sunday, Sunday afternoon, right, we went and got some food. We went to the North Coast, and it was wet. And they said, it's a rainy day. Could we go see the Ring of Kerry? I mean, how long they ring the, the wife to see if she's a helicopter out of the hangar? Um, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I just looked around, I just looked around and went, no. Instead, we took him back to the, to the house and gave him the log fire experience and sitting on 1899 Dunn Stores deck chairs in my living room, but that's not to say the, to say the least. And um, uh, Side note, I'm going way sidetrack here. Who's all been at Fulton's Pumpkin Patch? This is a wee sidetrack. This was yesterday, we went yesterday. Just a wee side note. The Gambles Donkey and Horse is at Fulton's Pumpkin Patch. Uh, there you go. There you go. Billy and Bobby are there. You can pet away for free. Um, don't know how I got caught up in that one, but the ADHD is coming back in again. But God is still good. My pastor may be crazy, but God still is good. God is good, Hills Church. I, I, I intentionally just wanted to keep a short thought for this morning. It is really that. To remind us of, can you imagine facing whatever you're going to face in life without God? Can you imagine what people are facing in scenarios in their life without a Savior? We face every single thing we face, we face it with the assurance that God is with us. So no matter what we face, no matter how dark it may seem, how challenging it may seem, what a peace it brings. When it comes to giving up, you see, the bottom line Sometimes, I don't know about you, but as a follower of Jesus and as a person, anyone else doesn't know me, I'm pretty thran. I get something to my head and that's going to work. We're going to make the railings for the house. They may be the weight of six men, but we will get them up, Peter. Isn't that right? I may have broke your back, but we got them up. I mean, I, I, I'm a person that goes for it. Listen, God is in control and his hand is upon you. Do you know that? He is for you. Yes? God is going to come through. He's going to do things in your life. He's going to provide. He's going to blow your mind. But giving up is sometimes, I'm a person that i got to get to a place where my back's to the wall before I trust God. Anyone else? I'm the kind of person, if I'm being honest, I don't always do this, Health Church. I don't always get this right. I, I, I don't always say the words of the Bible when I nip my finger in the door. I don't always get it right. But God always gets it right. But you see, this thought of giving up, really and truthfully, it kind of is where we need to be. Because when we give up, then God can start to work. And I kind of think maybe that we read through Scripture and 612 times it mentions God. And you go home today and type it into Google because you can do that yourself. But if you look at it, really and truthfully, even today, who's read today's Glorify Daily Devotion? How good was it, eh? This is literally, I read, I read we, we have Glorify. If you're not on Glorify, we as a church read Glorify together. We'll give you a year's subscription for free. It's amazing. Just speak to us after service. We'll, we'll shoot you the link. Hey, connect with us so, and then we can have your email. Shoot us a message. We'll send you the, the app. But today's talk on, on, on Glorify, I don't know if you've all read or not, but do read it today because it's great. It's all about Abraham and the sacrifice to his son. And really, really, what the act of God was really doing with Abraham, it was the link between him getting him to surrender, to come to his end. He put him so far that he says to him, get your son, put him on an altar. And... But it was only when Abraham came to the end of his what did God come through. You see, quitting isn't really what it's about. It's not about giving up and quitting. Hills Church, that's not who we are. We're not quitters here. 
We're going to plow on. We're going to fill this place again this year for carols. And do you know what I'm going to say right now? Next year, I believe we could double up this place. Do you believe that for carols? It's not a problem at all. This will be sold out in a week when we put our tickets out and people are going to come again to experience these. Did you know this, that there are people that call the church, our church the Hills Church because they were at our carol service twice? Did you know people in the Northwest are not going to church anymore? Did you know that, like, that 1% of us are Christian? The target's so big we can't miss. This place is growing slowly. Church, we are a church that's not here to say we know everything. We've got it all sorted out. We're the best thing in town. Da, 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 da. What we are saying is we have a God that no matter what you're facing, but God will always come through. And he is building this church. Yes? But the truth is when you give stuff up, it's like tithing. And it's like, it's like biblical obedience. Any biblical obedience or Christian thing, like Christian principles that God calls us to follow always causes us to die to ourselves. But, but I love even the principle of tithing because when I, when I think of tithing, because it's the first thing I do every month is I give to, to my tithe and offerings to the church because what I'm really doing is it takes all the pressure off me. So I'm going, God, you know the crack, and you know my finances, you know my resources, so I'm going to trust you with, with the bit that you've called me to give, and you can sort the rest. Not a sermon about tithing at all, but a certain illustration. It's, it's like facing any challenge in life. If you're facing any difficulty right now, you're carrying a difficulty, <laughs> difficulty that's not yours to carry. Every time that I get an anxious thought, I mean, I was helping my brother paint the shed the other day, and like, it's really safe because he hasn't got a door on it. He's just got a roller door. And the power went out. How many people know when the power goes out, the door can't go up? And when you have anxieties in your journey, and you think that you're trapped, for about three minutes, I was freaking out. Had a torch on. How am I going to get out of here? It was just yesterday. I mean, I was going like, what is going on? And when I opened my Bible, it was the Bible app. You know the Bible thing? And for some reason, it just says in the Bible app, but when I looked at it, if God is for you, nothing can be against you. If God is for me, not one thing can be against me. God is, though, for me. Therefore, nothing can be against me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. So whenever you're facing whatever you're facing, because listen, if you're not facing something, it's just when you're facing something. But if you could only, if Andy Gamble could only get this stuff, like when I picked up from the Americans to come back to where I was a little second ago, what I love about them, and, and, and they're all brilliance and what they bring, and I love that they talk about God being in everything. And Hills Church, I want us to be a church that talks about God being in everything. Because guess why? God is in everything. I am not here today because it's a good idea. I am here today because it is a God idea. I am here today because this is a God idea. You are here today because it is a God idea. God's design, God intent, God's plan and purpose for you was for you to be here today. And He is in control. So all your worries and all your doubt, because prayer causes me to give up my control. Because here's the truth, Hills Church. I am a person that wants to do things on my own. No one else cop that on. I want to do it myself. I'm a fixer. That's kind of who I am. You call me when your car breaks down. I mean, you know, could you ring that boy and see what it took me? It's just, like, it's just kind of who I am. Yeah. I like to do things and whatever. But I, and I, I love to help and I love to see. And I, I've come to the realization, though, that God's way better doing things than me. And God's way better doing things than you. So no matter what it is, even when you're trying to get your child to stop crying, you're sitting in church. Which, by the way, Stephen, you're doing a pretty good job. I mean, it blows my mind how you're doing that. In fact, I think like, it's like, unbelievable what you're doing there. Anyway, that's a side note. You should try. Can you have Ralph for the day? I mean, what, what, what if them at 9 p.m. tomorrow night? Um, whether, it's, whether it's something so small, if it's worrying about going to school tomorrow, if it's, if it's you can't be bored, if it's whatever it may be, the cows are not out in the grass. The job's not really working. The employee, honestly, Andy, I got the car, and to be honest with you, the clutch is hanging out of her. I shouldn't have bought the car. I mean, if it's the, whatever it is, give it to God. We just had communion this morning. We're going to worship now in a little minute. Whatever you're carrying your back is not designed for you to carry on your back. Because God's Son, Jesus, is not dead. 
because God brought him to life. Your story is not over. It's just getting started. And here's what I want you to do this week is to tell people tomorrow that you are at church today. Tell people tomorrow that you are a follower of Jesus this afternoon. Ask people to church. Ask them, can you pray for them? Talk about your faith. Tell them about your failures because failure isn't fatal. It is not the end because faithfulness of God will never, ever stop. God's goodness is amazing. Would you believe that? And I want to be a person, and also as a church, and we just took this week to just kind of settle ourselves and maybe provoke us to think about this. Let's talk about God being in everything. Because He is in everything. Even whenever the time of your life seems challenging, did you know that some people pray for the very fact that you prayed for something and now it's there you're now complaining about? Because often when we pray for things, God gives us stuff to test us and challenge us and stretch us. God is with you. But God, Andy, it is not good at the moment. I am facing something and you do not know what it's like. You're right. I really don't know what it's like. But God knows what it's like. Andy, you on, honestly, mate, you're a young, you're a young whopper snap here. Me, I'm still selling, calling myself young and turn forty in a winter months. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, I feel you. I, what? You don't understand. You don't know what it's like to walk in my shoes. But God knows what it's like to walk in your shoes. But God knows what it's like. But God has a plan and a purpose for you. Isn't that humble, Hills Church? as we come to a close, and the band's going to join me on the stage. When I stop, and kind of that's the theme of this morning. You know, Ralph last night, here we go, another story about Ralph. He fell three times yesterday and banged his head. That's right. And then in the middle of the night, he's up crying, sore head, nausea, all this crack. And you're on Google and it's just like, jeepers and I, has he cracked a skull again? I mean, seriously, this guy is not even like a teenager yet. Um, he gets it all from his mother. We know. Um, he's, he's just me. He is just the most, yes, he's just me. There we go. And you know, it's just a moment of, we were Googling and Victoria just goes, lay hands on the boy and pray for him, will you? Like, I'm, a, I'm the pastor of a church. And so often, reaching out to God can be the actual last thing. I, I can go to Google first. I can go to Instagram for my hope. I can go to Facebook, whatever that's all about. I, I can go to the... I, but you can go to the... I, I can go to the source. Put the cow pole on to him. And, and we were worried for him at one point. We were like, kind of, when you... No, it's all like, what was it? What, what's that word it's called? What's the word that they're saying? In that thing? In that thing? Concussion, is that what it is? All the symptoms I had was fear, concussion. And then you read it about, because he has a cracked skull before, and we all know that story, but that's another day. And just in a moment, we prayed for him. And I said, God, I don't know what you're at, but God, I trust you. But God, I ask for healing over my boy in Jesus' name. Next thing I knew, I was up this morning away, and Ralph was all good. From the weirdest thing to the biggest thing, God is with you. The Bible says he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. And I don't know about you, but does that bring you peace? Yeah. Hey, if you're out there and you're listening to this message, maybe as a podcast, and you're on the car, went on the way to work, or you're on a treadmill right now, or you're sitting here in this room just listening to this, and you don't know Jesus, well, he wants to get to know you. And when you come to know him, there's a peace that's going to come into your life that you will not, you will not believe. He's got a plan and he's got a purpose for you. Hey, Andy, but you don't know my past. Well, I, I don't need to know. God knows and he's going to forgive you because all you got to do is say sorry and invite him into your life. For us as followers of Jesus, it's just good for us to stop sometimes to set, take a seat before God and remember all that he's done for us to thank him for all the times he's come through and to praise him for where he's taken us. Because no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what it may look like, no matter how bad it may look like, but God knows what it looks like. But God has an answer.
but God is our provider. Hey, thanks again for checking out the Hills Church podcast. Hey, if this message has inspired or encouraged you in any way, why don't you share it with a friend? Hey, as well as that, we meet every Sunday at 11 a.m. at the Waterside Theatre, and we'd love to see you at one of our services. But hey, thanks again for checking out the podcast. Why don't you subscribe to our channel?